Okay, question three. A piece of land is in the shape of a triangle as shown. PR is 250 meters. So that's shown on the diagram. So let's just, we just score that out. We don't really know that. Uh, PR is 180. Uh, angle, yep, so we don't know that. The owner wishes to build a fence along QR. So let's just call that X, shall we? And we're going to calculate the length of that fence. Okay. So now we don't really need to worry about any of the information. It's just a straight, here's a diagram, calculate X. Okay. So when I see questions like this, angles and lines, I'm thinking to myself, is it a sine rule or a cosine rule? Okay. You should be thinking the same thing. How do we know it's sine or cosine? Well, sometimes they actually will tell you they'll give it instead of the angle, they might tell you, well, sine of the angle is, is something, or pen's going a bit wild. Um they'll they'll tell you, you know, sine of the angle is over. So you know it's going to be a sine expression. But the big giveaway really is that we've got three sides, okay? We know two, we're trying to find one. So the minute you get three sides, you're not doing the sine rule. If you've got two sides and two angles, that's when you're doing the sine rule. Okay, but three sides should instantly make you think, right, it's a cosine rule. Okay. So go to our formula sheet, we've got the cosine rule. And even though they already rearrange it for us as well, there's not even any of you thinking here, okay? Um, it's just write it down. So the one we're obviously going for is the A squared one, because we're trying to find a length, not an angle. Okay. C squared minus 2BC cos A. Now, it's probably worth pointing out at this point um, what the ABs and, and Cs mean. Okay, so if we've got a, an arbitrary triangle, right? With very wobbly sides, okay. Here's another farmer's field, a triangular farmer's field. Um, if we call our lens A, B, and C, oh, sorry, my phone's gone off it. I will mute that. Sorry about that. Uh, if we've got our sides A, B, and C, small A, B, and C, then the angle opposite each of the sides, okay, is going to be the same letter but capitalized, okay. That's the convention we use, okay. So we've got big A. A big B, a big C. Okay. Now, when we look at the cosine rule, we can see we've got when we're trying to find A, okay, we need to know what B and C are, and we need to know what big A is, okay. So, big A is the angle opposite the side we're trying to find, and what's B and C? Just the two other sides, doesn't matter which, okay. But the point is, I'll just highlight it. We need to know, so if we're trying to find our A, we need to know the angle opposite it, and then just the two adjacent sides. Okay, so if they gave us another angle in here, they could have confused us by telling us what this angle was, or what this angle was, okay? And then we'd be thinking, oh, which one do I use? Okay, and I've not even done that. We've only got three bits of information to put into an equation that's got um, you know, three unknowns. But just so you know, that's that's what we're doing, okay? Let's make that minus go down. Okay, so I'm just going to call B 250. It could be either. It doesn't matter if it's 250 or 180, but be consistent, okay? Minus 2 times 250 times 180 times cos 147, okay? And that is equal to A squared, okay? So let's get our calculators out. Let's work through some of this. Uh, I'm just going to take it bit by bit just to kind of show the... Yeah, just, just bit by bit, just to kind of break it up. Okay. You, I would probably just usually write this as one big bit in my calculator, but just to show. So that first section is that, and the second section will do 2 times 250, 2 times 250, times 180, times cos of 147. And that's actually given as a negative. That's given as negative 7, 5, 4, to zero okay so if we do four nine sorry uh, nine four nine zero zero we're going to add seven five four eight zero and that's giving me one thousand no, sorry, 170 thousand three hundred and eighty okay now a lot of folk are going to stop there and going to go oh look at that that is a big fence isn't it 170 kilometers oh i'm surprised that's so big okay a lot of folk are going to stop at that point Right? No. 
classic rookie mistake here is to forget we've got a squared, okay? And you can't even forget it. Just look at your answer. Does that answer make sense? No, it does not. Not even close, okay? So the last thing we need to do is just square root that number, okay? And again, I'm showing loads of work in here. You don't have to show just as much work in as this, okay? So square root of 170380. And that's going to give me 412.77 meters. Okay, I'm just going to check the question. Yeah, there's nothing about rounding, so that should be okay, right? Let's see where the marks are in the marking scheme. Red pen. So our first mark is for a correct substitution. Fantastic. Our second mark is for getting down to here. And our third mark is for doing the square root. Okay. Very easy question. Very, very easy. Uh, all you have to, the only hard bit there is identifying what the code that you're using the cosine rule. Some people might look at that and think, oh, wait a minute, is it trig? Do I have to do Sokatoa? What am I doing? But once you know it's the cosine rule, dead straightforward. And again, just having that, pardon me, that extra knowledge about why we're using the lens we're using. Okay, that's quite important. Because in some other context, it might be harder. Okay, maybe they would make you work out an angle and you'd have to think, well, which angle am I going to work out? Okay, so if you're trying to work out the length x here, you need to know the angle opposite and then just the two other sides. And they're b and c, it doesn't matter which. That could be b, that could be b. Okay, so just remember this little triangle here, the abc with the angles opposite the capitals. Okay, stuff. How are we doing for time? Let's see, six minutes, that's fine seven minutes it's okay i'm restricted to 15 minutes per video um but yeah okay solve the equation so uh, it, it can be yeah it can be tricky when they say things like this because again if you if you're well drilled you instantly look at that and you know where to go okay um solve the equation really just means find x okay and, and i think when we hear about solve a murder you know solve a crime people understand or oh, trying to find the, the killer and all the rest of it okay people understand about what that means you know the word solve in a mathematical context, sometimes it can be lost, okay? And in these kind of questions, we're trying to find x, okay? So solve the equation just means find x. And it's a shame we don't just write, you know, find x. Because I think at that point, people think, all right, well, I need to have x equals. And then that jogs people's memories. Why would I get x on its own? Ah, I'm going to need to factorise, okay? So in this case, um, some people might start and think, well, how do I factorise this? going to have to, you know, add to give me this, multiply to give me this. Oh, no, there's a two here. That makes it more complicated. The clue is actually that they say to one decimal place, okay? This kind of question, you should instantly be thinking to yourself, ah, it's the quadratic formula, okay? Go straight, and that's again at the front of your booklet, okay? So minus b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If you don't know this formula or you're not comfortable with it, get comfortable with it because it's very straightforward to use and it comes up, oh, so far every paper I've done, at least once, okay? So very important to do this. A is 2, because A is the coefficient of the x squared term. B is equal to 5, because it's the coefficient of the next term. And C is equal to minus 4. And it's important you remember the minus, okay? Minus 4. And so we've got our, our equation to be given to us. Brilliant. We know that ABC is just 2, 5, minus 4. That's dead straightforward. And we're just going to substitute in. Now, what I like to do, because some questions call for this, um, not this question particularly, but some questions do, is working out the discriminant, okay, which is the b squared minus 4ac part. So I like to do that separately, okay? I like to have a little box up here where I've got my abc, and then I like to have a little box down here where I work out my b squared minus 4ac, okay? Um, just, I've got time, yeah, just if we're just chatting, um, the discriminant lets us know the nature of the roots of the equation, okay? So if we've got... These are kind of three st um, random graphs, okay? This graph, this top one, cuts the x-axis twice, okay? So that's got two roots. This one just touches the x-axis, so there's one root. And this one doesn't touch the x-axis, so there's no roots, okay? So the discriminant for this one is going to be less than zero, okay? It's going to be negative. For this one, the discriminant is going to be equal to zero. And for this one, the discriminant is greater than zero. Okay. Now, it kind of makes sense if you think about the plus and minus, and we'll come back to that. Okay. But that's just why I like to work out this discriminant um, on its own, because for some questions, they might ask, what is the 
the nature of the routes and you just do v squared minus 40c and say well there's going to be two real routes there's going to be one route hope there's no real routes okay so v squared that's 25 minus 4ac that's minus 4 times 2 oh sorry plus 4 times 2 times minus 4 get ahead of myself again it's really important here just to keep this in a bracket and watch our negatives okay so that's 25 minus 8 times 4, 8 sixteen squared equals 32, and that's going to be a minus. So 2 minus and make a positive, add them on, that's going to be 57. So when I square it's 57, so there's going to be two real roots for this if anyone cared, okay? Now let's substitute the rest in. Minus b is minus 5, plus or minus the square root of 57, divided by 2a, which is going to be 4. Now you could have written 2 times 2 if you wanted. It's going to be better to actually do that, just to physically make sure you put all the numbers in correctly. Okay, but I'm just going to do that. Okay. So what does this mean? Well, we've got two roots. One root is going to be minus 4 is minus 5 plus root 57 divided by 4. And one root is going to be minus 5 minus root 57 divided by 4. Okay, so that's root 1 and root 2. Now you can see why now. If we had our discriminant is 0, why would we just have one root? Because it doesn't. if we add 0... Or take away zero, the number would just be minus five over four. There'd be one root. Okay. If the discriminant was less than zero, this wouldn't make sense. We'd be taking the square root of a negative number, and the equation wouldn't make sense. Okay. So yeah, um, that's that's if, that's why why those two work, right? But now we we know we've got two roots because this number is bigger than zero. So we're adding a number and taking a number away. So we're going to end up with two different numbers. So let's just put that in our calculators. So that's going to give me 0 point, I'll just say 0 0.6, that should be fine, 0 0.64, do two decimal places. And for the other question, that's going to give me, change that positive to a negative, that's going to give me minus 3.14. Okay, good stuff. Be careful, um, when you're dividing by 4 in your calculator, again, if you just wrote down minus 5, plus root 57 divided by 4, what might happen is it just divides the last section by 4. So in your calculator, you might almost want to put a bracket around there, okay, just to make sure you're getting the right number, okay? So, yeah, there you go, that should work. If you want to test it, sub one of these back into the beginning, do 2 times 0 0.62 squared plus 5 times 0 0.64, that should come out to 0. If you want to test it, same with this number, okay? So you've got to recheck if you think, oh, are those numbers right, okay? So, again, not a hard question. Solve just means find x. How do we find x? Well, we factorise it. Hmm, can we factorise that? Nope. But how can we always factorise it? With our equation which is given. And the clue is one decimal place. Okay? And I just chat through discriminants as well. Um, just because that's how I like to play the working out. So for this, you're going to be getting a mark for substituting your, your formula. Okay? So if you've got the full substitution, if you've written down this formula and substituted everything in, you're going to get a mark. You're then going to get a mark for your discriminant. So we get, we're going to get a mark for the discriminant, and then we're going to get a mark for finishing off the substitution, and then you just get one mark for these two at the end. So actually, if you just did b squared minus 4ac, you know, suddenly you're actually getting something, okay? But not a difficult question, okay? We're given the formula. It's easy to know what a, b, and c are. Just take your time when you go through, watch your negatives, and you can substitute back into the beginning to see if you've got it right. Okay, good stuff.